What's up, everybody? Coach Anthony here. So I wanted to take a moment to clarify what I was trying to say in a previous video about the importance of drinking the water. And so what I have for me behind me here is an illustration where I'm going to break that down even in more detail, but in a simplified way so you can understand it and how the process of breaking down fat occurs or one of the methods in that process, I'll say, to uh, encourage you to drink more water and you understand what's happening inside your body, okay? All right, so first analogy that I wanna give before I even you know go over any of this behind me, okay? Is uh, if you can imagine just a long uh, tree, okay? A long tree that has uh, 32 branches, or excuse me, 16 branches on it, okay? So imagine a tree, there's branch one, branch two, branch three, branch four, and so on, so on, so on, okay? Now, if I'm a lumberjack, and I want to cut down this tree, okay? And then if you, and break it down into smaller blocks so it can be transported and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and used maybe to build a couch or a furniture or a table, or whatever, right? Keep that process in your mind, okay? So what's gonna happen is, is I'm going to chop down this tree and I'm gonna start breaking it up into smaller blocks, okay? We'll just say smaller logs, all right? So this tree, we'll call it the fat tree, okay? This tree again has 16 branches. Now, if you can think back to the periodic table of elements way back in, you know, maybe middle school, or high school, whatever, you remember you had, you know, different elements. You had oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, titanium, and all these other kind of elements on that periodic table. Because that, that's what makes up the world that we live in, right? Different elements on that, on that periodic table. So a fat molecule has 16 molecules of carbon, 32 molecules of hydrogen, and just two molecules of hydrogen. So C16, H32, two of oxygen. Now, why is that important? I'm going to get to that, okay? So... So you better draw this out. Make sure I draw this big enough here. I got my markers. This is actually what a, chemically, a uh, fat molecule looks like. You got 16 carbons. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on, so on, so on. I'm running out of room here. And then on the top, you got your hydrogens. You have hydrogen here, hydrogen here, Hydrogen here, hydrogen here, okay? I think you kind of get the idea, okay? You kind of get the idea. And then at the very end of this chain, let's say this is always 16, you have your oxygen here, and you have your oxygen here, okay, on the very end. And I know it's a little small, but I think you can picture that out. Now, what has to happen on this tree is I've got to, for me to, let me back up, fat is energy, just like carbohydrates are energy. Protein is energy. All of these things are energy, that's why we eat, right? We eat proteins, we eat fats, we eat carbs, they all give us energy. They give us energy in varying amounts. Some not as much as others, some more than others, right? So fat is just stored energy. The problem is, what happens is, is when we get overweight, we haven't used the energy that we've been consuming over time, and therefore our body just stores it up for one day when it has to be used for energy. So in order to lose weight, what we have to do is create an environment that gives, uh, create an environment that allows us to use more fat as an energy source so we lose weight, right? So your weight is really just a reflection of your bones, your muscles, and energy, <laughs> okay? It's just stored energy, right? So anyway, going back to this analogy now. So what has to happen is we want to use this fat for energy. So how does that happen? Let's go back to this illustration here. So you have your fat molecule, 16 carbons, 32 hydrogens, oxygen. What happens is oxidation has to happen. What does that mean, coach? Oxidation just simply means oxygen is required 
for the breakdown of fat. Okay? We call that process oxidation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this fat molecule and we're going to add to it 23 molecules of oxygen. Okay? 23 molecules of oxygen to break it up. So we're going to come in and just go back to, you know, if you can think of like a lumberjack, you know, uh, chopping away at a tree, right? So basically, so I have this, this 16 uh, block tree here, or 16 branch tree, and I brought in 23 lumberjacks to chop up this tree, okay? That process is called oxidation. And then when you add in the 23 molecules of oxygen, and that's called oxidation, what happens is you now break apart this fat molecule into 16 molecules of carbon dioxide and 16 molecules of, we all know what this is, H2O. So by oxidizing or adding oxygen to fat, I've broken up that fat into carbon dioxide and water, okay? Carbon dioxide and water. So I've now broken apart this fat. Now, this process, again, does not happen without oxygen. You have to have it. And again, we get oxygen as humans. Obviously, we breathe in oxygen. But as a secondary source of oxygen as well, we get it from water. So what happens is, we, what literally happens is, we don't break down fat at the same rate when we don't have enough oxygen to go along with it. Okay? Which, this is why a person would say, make a statement like, Hmm, I don't sweat that much, right? Well, because your body, because sweating, all sweating is, is your body getting rid of heat. Your body is trying to cool its internal temperature because when you work out, when you move, you get hot, right? Your temperature goes up inside your body. So as a mechanism to cool your body, your body starts to sweat, okay? And as the wind or the air hits the sweat, it then cools your body temperature, okay? So what literally happens for a person that's only drinking a bottle of water or two bottles of water or three or four bottles of water a day, what's literally happening is, is your internal body temperature is cooking on the inside and not allowing it to cool itself or it's cooling itself at a very slow pace. Which is, so what happens is you actually, your carbon dioxide levels get so high you start to feel dizzy because your body cannot cool itself appropriately, okay? And then you start to feel dizzy. You start to feel nauseous and people pass out, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So the whole point that I'm trying to make here is just simply giving you a more detailed explanation on why water drinking is so vitally important for the oxidation or breakdown of fat because when you literally don't drink water, this oxidation process becomes very, very, very slow. Very, very, very slow, okay? So now one more thing that I wanna point out here in creating an environment to burn more fat, especially during a workout, okay? And just so you know what I'm reading here, this is my exercise physiology book from college, okay? I actually kept it. <laughs> so, read this statement here, and I highlighted this years ago. It says, if a carbohydrate meal or drink is consumed 30 to 60 minutes prior to exercise, blood glucose levels rise and more insulin is released from the pancreas. This elevation in blood insulin results in diminished lipolysis and a reduction in fat metabolism. Now I'm gonna break down that statement, okay? Again, what we're trying to do here collectively is tone and or lose weight. We're trying to burn fat, burn more body fat, okay? That's our goal. 
And again, I said earlier in the video that the whole point is, is we have to create an environment for your body to do that. Okay. And not only is drinking water one of the ways that we talked about here to burn more fat because, again, you need oxygen to burn fat. We went through that. But another thing that we have to do is keeping insulin low. Okay. Many people have heard of insulin before. I'm sure you, you know, if you know anyone that's a diabetic, insulin, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. It's insulin is a fat storing hormone. Okay. This is what I mean by that. Okay. Your body has hormones. There, uh, when your body releases home, it's like, imagine just like a traffic cop. Okay. Okay. He raises up his hand. He says, stop this side. Y'all come on through. He says, stop over here. This side. Y'all come on through a traffic cop. That's basically what hormones do on the inside of your body. Okay. So what insulin does, when you eat food, whether it be chips, whether it be broccoli, whether it be anything, insulin has a response. Okay. Insulin has a response. However, what we want to do is we want to have insulin resp insulin's response stay very low, okay? Because when insulin goes up, that means we're storing more fat. When insulin stays down, that hormone, there's another hormone called glucagon that causes us to release more fat into the bloodstream, and then we can use that fat for energy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's where the whole idea of intermittent fasting comes into play, okay? Because insulin stays low, glucagon, that's the traffic cop is saying, all right, come on, fat, come on, fat, we're going to use you for energy, back it up, back it up, come on, come on in, come on, come on to these other cells in the body so we can use you for energy, okay? That's what glucagon does, okay? And that's exactly what we want. However, here in lies the problem that most people do not understand. Insulin goes up in varying amounts, just like I said earlier. Broccoli, the insulin response is almost nothing, okay? The scale, think about it like this, on a scale of 1 to 100. The response, if I remember correctly, I have to look this up, but the insulin response to broccoli is like 12, if I remember right, but it's very, very low, Okay? But guess what the insulin response to things like breads, starches, uh, like chips, fried foods, it's almost over. It's, I think it's it, like at 69, 70, 85. They're super high. And again, the scale is only 1 to 100. Okay, And the scale that I'm referring to is a glycemic index. Okay, So the higher on the foods that you're eating... The higher you are on that scale of 1 to 100, 60, 70, 80, 100, the higher you are, the higher insulin goes up, which means you're going to store more fat, which means when you come in here to work out, what's going to happen is you're going to be putting in all this effort and working and working and working and working, but because insulin is still high, you're not going to burn more fat because you really haven't released much, released much fat into the bloodstream to be used for energy because of those high glycemic index foods that you've been consuming, which is exactly why greens are important because greens have a low insulin response, which then allows you to release more fat into your bloodstream so you can be broken down and taken to the cell and used for energy. That's why greens are important, okay? So even if you're a person right now that your taste buds haven't changed yet, because they will, and you're like, man, I really don't like the taste of water. I cannot put something in it. Or a person that says, you know, I really don't like vegetables. I really don't, don't taste good to me yet. For the sake of just the time here, just almost force them down anyway. Because what's going to happen is as you release more fat, your body's going to change. Your, your uh, taste buds are going to change. And all these different things are going to happen to where, first of all, you'll start to like it. But you'll, you'll see results so much faster so much faster than what you may have in the past okay so again now lipolysis don't worry about what that means it's just another process in the breaking down of fats just know that but again that process doesn't happen without creating an environment particularly with food in this case to where we keep insulin low we keep insulin down okay so 
And I, and I bring that out because, again, if I get asked the question, should I eat something before I come work out? And for many of you that are trying to lose weight, I would say no. You may say, yeah, but I feel like I'm barely making it through the workout. And I get that. However, what's going to happen over it, it would be better to have something with a low glycemic index if I just have to have something before workout. A low glycemic index then versus something with a high glycemic index. And even after a workout, okay, even after a workout, same thing. That's where your broccoli and your vegetables and things like that come into play. It would honestly really be better just to have you a great lunch, just drink straight water, because now what's going to happen by the time you get to a workout, especially if you're an evening workout person, your body is starting to release fat into your bloodstream for energy. So you would actually get more results by just having a good, solid, well-balanced lunch, let your body release some fat into your bloodstream, then come to work out. It may be a tough workout and it's okay. And it's okay because we're working towards a long-term goal. So I wanted to take time to break these things down. I know it's a little long video, but I hope this brings about a more awareness and an understanding about why we're doing what we're doing and why I'm saying what I'm saying to help you better understand your the makeup and the function of your own body, okay? This is the way that God made your body and it all serves a purpose, okay? And when you understand that purpose, you understand how to function, right? Okay, when you understand the purpose, you understand the function. So I hope this helps somebody. Love you guys. Uh, you may have to rewind this a couple of times, listen to it through. But in short, the whole point is, is number one, drink water. You need it to break down fat. Number two, when it comes to foods, Driving the point home of why vegetables are so important because they keep insulin down because when insulin goes up, when you eat fried foods and different things, the, the unhealthy stuff, animal crackers and things like that, and you don't eat your greens, insulin goes way up. And then when insulin goes way up, you can't lose fat that way. Okay, that's it.